welcome everybody welcome to my channel um, it's a glorious another sunny day here in Oregon for a change actually the last two weeks have been very nice so um, yeah we'll get into that in a little bit um, this is the Windy in Neverland channel you've probably figured that out already by now um, try to talk about floss tube related things so stitching um, as well as like family life things that are going on so let's jump right into that and get going with things um, it's been a busy two weeks I have as I mentioned it's been very very sunny out um, <laughs> I have been outside a lot I, mean, I don't know how much you can tell I'm already starting to get my tan I, I like to call this my gardener's tan because it's um, I wear my gloves outside all the time, so my hands are a little paler than the rest of me. But yeah, it's been a lot. I have been doing a lot. Um, a lot of bark dust. Obviously, that's the time of year we're getting those, as well as weeds, taking care of weeds. Um, so I've been spreading bark dust around. Um, there is one area in the backyard. I have finished a little bit more in the backyard as you know there's a process to it it's taking a while I planted the tree and now I have done a little bit more landscaping it's just a slow progress because not only is there a lot to figure out what I want to do with but um, I don't know what I want to do yet so I am still working on figuring out exactly what kind of landscaping I'm gonna have and then of course there's the process of it actually getting it done having the money to do it you know all those things so it's getting there it's slow but surely so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert a video real quick of what I did it's very cute very pretty um, sweet I love it um, so we'll put that in right now here is my newest addition to my yard very cute. I love it. I love, love, love the way it turned out. And if the flowers do what I'm hoping they do, then it will get very full and some of them will start cascading down as well. So several pots, several different things. Um, I'm not even going to tell you all the <laughs> flowers that I bought to put in these because I don't even know. I don't remember all of what they are. The bike I got at a... Um, um, antique store yes it's in very bad condition but that's the way I wanted it um, as you can see it does say Raleigh down there so it's a very old Raleigh bike um, the basket is new because I wanted something on the front and I just ordered that to put on the front so yes it does not look old for a reason love that seat by the way that uh, that's my kind of seat nice and big and comfortable um, this basket also is a new basket it's not something that came with the bike so I uh, am very happy with the way it turned out I am going to stick a um, pole kind of like behind the bike right around here and put a birdhouse on it I have this cute adorable birdhouse that's um, it's a lighter green than the bike is um, but complements it very well. It's got a few pieces of um, metal accents on it and some little flowers around the bo bottom like in pots or shrubs and things like that. Um, so it will look very cute sitting behind that bike. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to like attach to the post that it will sit on um, like a welcome sign or something like that. But my yard's coming along. Um, as you can see it's still icky there and kind of icky there but I got a good section of the back part here that's all um, bark dust and decorated all right hopefully that was enjoyable to see what I've done so far um, I've got a lot of you know the hamsters are going in the in the noggin there of a lot of the things that I might want to incorporate somehow I just don't know how I'm going to yet um, or if I will it it, it all depends so I, I come up with these plans and then as I'm going I either realize that's not gonna work that's not gonna look good or I just plain change my mind so I don't really that's why I don't have a whole plan for the backyard yet as to how everything's gonna look because it's probably gonna change 
it's probably going to change. Um, so we're getting there. We're getting there. The next thing, let's talk about um, some stitching stuff. So I want to talk about mania real quick because it's coming up. I mean, we're two thirds of the way through April already. And um, yeah, many will be here before we know. I know a lot of people have already started talking about it and kind of getting people's opinions on what they should do and whatnot. Um, I've kind of flip-flopped on that as well. Um, kind of like my yard, I've changed my mind a little bit. My original plan back in like December or something, I know I was way, going the way back here, was to um, start my January new stitches for my birthday month. So I had 31 new starts. And um, since January has been over with, I've been doing and I've been going back and working on those. So each each project, I'll work on it for 10 days, put it aside, work on the next one. So I've gotten through probably, I don't know, six, seven projects now since then, something like that. Maybe not quite that many. Um, and my original idea was, well, I'll do that again in May. Because January had 31 days, May has 31 days. I'll just kind of re redo the same thing I did in January. And then I started thinking, I don't know that I want to do that. Because for one, if there was something that had DMC floss in it, I didn't kit every single project with the DMC floss. Because we know that DMC floss usually, usually, their um, lot color doesn't change too much. So if you run out, you can go to the store and get more and it's not going to look a whole lot different. Whereas Fancy Floss, there's a chance that it's going to look a little different the next time you get it if you didn't get enough. So I didn't kit every single project that requires DMC with um, the amount of floss that it needs. So I'm kind of using floss. I'll go find out what floss I need to work on it for that day and I'll go get it. And I don't know that I want to do that. That's a lot of changing of floss every single day. There was the excitement in January of starting new things and I hadn't done it yet before so it wasn't that big a deal, but since I just did it in January, I don't know that I wanna do it again in May. So then there was the thought of, we'll just pick a few things to work on, but out of the, the new starts I did, but it's like, I'm kinda of already doing that. So then I came up with, I'm, Possibly, maybe, I'll do my Hade all of May. And that's all I'll work on. Because when I calculated out how many days I need to work on a project from those new starts in order to get my hands on them throughout the whole, you know, I've, I've laid my hands on all of them within a year. Um, I counted the amount of time for January and the time for May of only working on it one day each. So basically I took those those months, those 31 days for each of those months out of the equation. And I just figured out how many days I had left of the year and figured out that the 10 days would work. So if I don't work on those at all in May, it's not going to affect me being able to lay my hands on all of them throughout the whole year. So that's kind of where I'm at right now, is just focusing on my hate because once I, you know, in January, I couldn't really work on it because I really needed to spend every single day that I stitched on something, I needed to focus on that new start because I would, otherwise I'd get one stitch in, or maybe five stitches in, and then I would have to set it aside if I was going to work on the hate too, that day. So I didn't really work on January, and then I kind of... Once I started working on these projects for the 10 days, I kind of get sucked into it and I really wanted to focus on it. And I think since January, I worked on my head one whole day. <laughs> one day is it that I put stitches in it. So it really is being neglected and I really, really, really would like to get back into it. So I think that's my plan. I think I'm just going to focus completely on the head and not worry about the other stitches. Um... For one, it'll give me a break from stitching on those, and the hate will get attention. So, win-win, in my opinion. Um, the only thing is, it will be one solid project for the whole month. Um, so when I do videos, there won't be a lot of other things to show. Maybe I'll have really short videos in the month of May, um, whenever 
I show the updates for the Hade because there's not a whole lot going on, as we all know. It's like we find different places maybe to stitch. We may visit with our neighbors across fences or something and be outside and stitch. We, you know, there's just not a whole lot we can do. So um, I don't know how many of you are buying things online. So you're getting new things showing up. Um, Beth Twist has been trying to get everybody to focus on all the different local needle workshops. Um, you know, the small business we don't want to lose them, so we need to keep them, you know, buying things from them. Um, so every day she has a new uh, shop that she focuses on, and hopefully we are all taking advantage of that and trying to keep these people in business. Um, so I don't really order a whole lot. It's kind of been good because then if I'm not in the store to see it, then I'm not going out and buying it or ordering it. The only bad thing is then I don't have things to show you as often. Um, so unfortunately, because of all of this, that does mean we are limited to how we're getting together. Some people are doing Zoom meetups, which is great, or they meet in a big parking lot. So they're at least six feet apart from each other to be able to talk and stitch and whatnot. Um, there's a lot of other things that have been canceled. We all know that there's birthdays and there's anniversaries and different things that are getting canceled, but there's also some um, retreats that are having to be canceled. So um, Acorns and Threads was going to have one in May and they've had to postpone that. So unfortunately that got postponed. Um, they're supposed to have one in the fall. Who knows what will happen with that. I just heard um, I think my husband might have said something that he had heard that they're, the Oregon State Ferry isn't even going to go on this year. I mean, that's the end of August, beginning of September, but they've already said that they probably won't do that because it's just too many people gathered, which <laughs> the Oregon State Fair does not have that many people that go to it compared to some of those big ones. Um, so you got too many people and then potentially not knowing when they're going to let up on restrictions as to how, when that restrictions are let up versus when the state fair happens. So if it's too close together, then it's just, they're thinking there's too many people that are going to be gathered. Um, I know California had mentioned that they potentially won't even have any big gathering events through this whole year. So not maybe until 21. Um, so things like concerts and whatnot. Um, I don't know. It's, it's all weird. We live in such a weird time right now. So, um, some of the other things I've been doing is, and you guys have probably been doing this too. You've been going through and, um, cleaning your houses very well in depth cleaning, like spring cleaning. So not only getting things clean, but you're reorganizing, getting the clutter and the junk out, things that you don't use anymore and you're getting rid of the, well, kind of getting rid of. <laughs> For right now, we just have to shove them in a corner or in a shed or garage until we can take them to like a thrift store or something because um, you can't really do anything with them. But you're getting all that kind of stuff done, which is good. Um, I have been doing that as well as my yard work. I cleaned out some areas inside the house. There's still a lot more to do because it's been sunny so much. I've been outside 80% of the time. And the other time is just giving my back a break because it starts screaming at me after a day or two of a lot of hours and hours of work. So um, I can't really do a whole lot inside then when it's like that. But one of the things I did was clean the outside of all my windows. I have a lot of windows. I can't tell you. It's a lot of windows. Now, thankfully, I went and got one of those things that you attach to the hose and you spray. Because I probably could have um, used a little ladder to get to some of these kind of windows. They're tall, but they're still reachable. But I do have a second story that has one, two, let's see, one, two, three, four, four windows on the second story. And these are old windows. Um, almost all the windows in our house are the original windows. And so they do not like fold inside. It's not like you can attach the, un unattach them from the sides and let them fold in and clean them that way. You have to clean them from the outside. I did not want to get my big old ladder out and try and get clear up there with, uh, you know, spray and wash and hand wash them. So I just got the stuff that attaches to the hose 
you spray it, you let it sit there for a little bit, and then you rinse it off. So, no, it wasn't as much work, but you do have to let it sit for like 15 minutes on the windows, and it's not supposed to dry out, so there's times where I had to go back and spray it again because it was starting to dry out um, before I could rinse it off. They look so nice. <laughs> oh, they look so nice. So I'm going to show you a quick montage, very quick, of just how many windows I have. So here it is. Our doors, almost every single one of our doors has glass on it. I didn't show you, I show you do the back French door that attaches to a bedroom, but we also have a back door off of our kitchen. Um, it has a big oval um, glass section in it. I didn't show you that, but almost every single thing in our house is glass, 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 glass. So lots of windows, big windows, uh, doors with lots of glass in them too. So I've been very busy. We got some people walking by. So, I think we're going to get into the stitching now. All right. I'm going to pause the video so that they can walk by. They're still kind of close, but they're not like right in front of our house. So, let's get to some stitching stuff. Um, as I mentioned, I don't have a lot of projects going on. I want to know how you all do like 10 projects within a week or two and show your progress on them. I don't think I could do that many projects in that amount of time and I certainly wouldn't be getting a lot done if I did so I don't have that many to show you um, I'm gonna show you the progress I've made on the tea balls so yes I'm gonna show you this way instead of showing you as a view down on a table today just because it's so nice and I want to be outside it was raining yesterday so I'm glad to get out again um, so the tea balls so I had done this one before I showed you and now I'm working on this one with slight modifications. I'm not really, I'm going to change the center part here a little bit. The other thing I did different is on this one I did um, over two squares. And on this one I'm doing over one. Um, so, this is what I've done so far. Let me see if I need to put my hand behind this so you can see it better. So, this is over one, as I mentioned. It's much um, tighter and it takes up far less room. I'm going to show you, if you remember, this is over two. So it really wrapped around a lot versus this. So you can see quite a bit of a difference in the tightness of the, the uh, stitching. Um, I, I like them both. I'll probably alternate between what I do, which uh, once I do. The only bad thing is when you do it over two, it does spread this out a lot more. So you're going around that corner a lot more, and this will probably stay more in the front, a little bit on the sides, but not as much as this one. So we're getting there. I only work on this like once a week, so I, there's not a ton of progress. I think the last time I had one of these trees and maybe one of these lines on the side done, so I got quite a bit done the last time I worked on it. So we're getting there. So set those down. The next thing is what I stitched on for the main... Um, 10 days were between my filming here so I got quite a bit done on it so I switched to the voice of the shepherd you notice it, it's in a kind of a heart shape here um, and I'll compare what I've gotten done to this picture in a, in a minute so here it is there's a lot done I've gotten a lot done and it's so pretty so pretty so this is why I kind of like filming this when it's sitting on a table so I'm going to show you the picture as well as the thing so I don't have this stuff up here done yet the top of the heart I don't have there's literally a heart down here I don't have that done and then the side aspects there's a few other things like this I don't have the top part because I for whatever reason I thought I had a crew and I did not have a crew floss and um, 
that's what it called for. It was a lot of a crew right there. So, yeah, it um, it's missing its top part <laughs> of that shepherd. Um, but a lot of it's turning out very nicely. I am so happy with this progress. It's just, it looks so nice. But I have finished my 10 days on this, and I have moved on to another project. So the next time I pick this up, I will probably finish it, considering how much I've gotten done in this time. It probably won't take too much longer to finish it. Alrighty, so the next thing, let me move some stuff around here, is, let's see here, find the front, nest egg. This is the Satsuma Street. Very cute. I know Easter's already done, but for whatever reason, I didn't feel like working on it before this time. So now that Easter's coming on, it's like, oh, I think I want to work on this now. Oh, yeah. So this is what I've done so far. Let me put this behind it here. There we go. So I've gotten a lot done. The When I had worked on it for January, I had done this part and um, some of this. I might have done all this white over here. Um, but since then, I worked a lot on this, starting to work on the basket down here. I love this because it's very colorful and I like Satsuma Street stuff. What I'm not happy about is how my stitches are turning out. I don't know how well you can see those in this um, without me zooming in real close. And sometimes zooming in real close turns it blurry, so I'm not going to try to do that right now. Um, it is on the called for fabric, which is a Weeks fabric. Weeks fabric's a little loose. So getting your stitches to sit just the way you want them is a little tough. So they're a little loose. Um, they're not sitting as pretty as I'd like. Um, you do have to switch, especially down in here. You're switching colors a ton. So, um, I mean, you've got two colors in here. There's about three or four colors in this, between the top and bottom part of this egg. Um, there's a whole bunch of different color changes here, even though you can't see it. About three or four different greens over here. Um, so you're only stitching a few um, stitches before you change so it's they're just not laying as nice because you're only doing a few stitches and because it's the week's fabric it's not <sighs> so frustrating when you want it to look good and it's not turning out as about well as you'd like um, but yeah I still like it because it is still sweet and you know what I'm only gonna have it out at Easter springy time um, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to stress about it too much, but it's coming along. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Um, so that is kind of it. Kind of go out of frame there. Kind of it for my stitching. The other thing I wanted to kind of mention, and I kind of did this last time, is what are you all doing to keep yourselves busy? Are you binging a whole bunch of things? Are you... Um, I am tired of binging things. Are you going, whether it's binging Netflix type of stuff, cable, whatever channels you watch, um, YouTube binging? Are you kind of getting tired of things? Have you run out of things? So I've, I gave you a couple suggestions last time. Um, another one that kind of popped up when my YouTube, when I start looking at that, um, is something to watch. And I've watched several of their things. They're so funny. And that's what I want. I mean, who wants to be depressed and think about too many serious things? I mean, if you watch the news, that's bad enough right there. So I try to find things that are a little more entertaining and fun to watch. <laughs> so one of the other ones I found was the Holderness family. I will try and remember to put this down in the description box so that you can see that name. They're funny. So it's a husband and wife, and they've got kids that one's a teenager and one might be a preteen kind of age. So they do funny things, you know, about what's going on now. But they also do funny things like way back, like this is what we had when we were kids, and they're very funny. Um, so yeah, check them out if you want something new to watch. Very entertaining. <laughs> All right, in keeping with the let's keep ourselves, our spirits up, 
I wanted to tell you about something that they did here in Dayton. This was earlier this week, so Tuesday maybe. Um, they had, well, I was in the kitchen and I was sitting there hearing some kind of music and I thought, well, it's not unusual to hear music, but I thought, I'm going to figure out where it's coming from, what's going on. And all that. <coughs> Excuse me. So about a block this way is a city park. It's just a one square block area. And in the summertime, they have music once a week and sometimes even more often than that. So it's not unusual for us to hear music. So I thought, well, maybe there's something going on. I know we're not supposed to gather, but what's going on? What am I hearing? So I look outside and sure enough, over by that on the street next to it, pause a minute, there is a um, truck and what looks like a really long flatbed that they're towing behind this truck, like a, um, a ram truck. And on this flatbed, it looks like there's a band. Like, wow, this is really unusual. So I'm listening and I'm watching and trying to figure out, are they just sitting in there? What's, what's going on? Then the truck is moving, but it's moving really slowly. And it goes down a block this direction, and then it turns towards our street, then it comes up our street, and then it turns and goes away from us. Kind of this zigzag. And they're just driving real slowly, and they're playing music. I'm like, oh, well, that's kind of cool. So, because they're going away, eventually the music's getting softer and softer, and I'm not hearing it anymore. About a half an hour later or so, I'm starting to hear the music again. And they played all kinds of different music. So when I first heard it, it was more like a country type song. And as it was getting closer again, that half an hour later, it started to be more of a rock song. So there's a variety of songs, music. Um, so they, they're heading back and they turn down and they head down our street. They're going to go right past our house. Well, now I really get to see what's going on. So they slowly 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 are driving around and they come and they see me I'm filming in our doorway the door is open and I'm just filming them and they actually stopped in front of our house for like 45 seconds or so and played while and of course they're waving the driver and passenger waving and then the drummers waving his stick at us and the other guys are waving at us and so I think anytime, because it looked like they had stopped at some other places, I think anytime somebody was out watching them, they would stop for a little bit and let them, those people hear the music a little bit longer. So, and there were people, there was a few people that were walking alongside. Um, there was one kid that was actually on a skateboard holding on to the back of the, um, the flatbed. So he was just skating along behind, <laughs> getting a free ride. Um, so they were just driving around Dayton, playing music for everybody, just to liven people's spirits. It was awesome. And the band, obviously the drummer was sitting on a normal stool, but like all the rest of the players the, that were playing instruments and singing were sitting on like lounge chairs, you know, like a lazy boy you would have in your house. <laughs> so they were very comfortable while they were driving around. Um, but it's just awesome. We have a, this wonderful little town that we live in, and I'm, I really love it. So I'm going to show you the little clip that I took of them as they drove by our house. The other thing I wanted to mention is that because it has been a nice day, 
um, probably about three weeks ago because today I'm filming this on a Sunday I believe it's like I haven't looked at the date most of us haven't we're like we're lucky if we know what day of the week it is let alone what the date is so it's somewhere around the 19th of April um, so about three weeks ago I wanted to get out because it was before we had all this sun and I went it happened to be a nice day on a Sunday and I went for a drive I just drove around um, just to get out and have something to do I was getting a little stir crazy so I went for a drive and you know in Oregon we've got just about everything here so you got the ocean which we can't go on even though you are far more than six feet apart from each other you have the mountains so we've got we have to cross the the coastal range to get to the coast um but most i don't know there's trails and stuff you can hike up in there but most people don't go there as much then you have the cascade range which has mount hood and that's part of mount st helens is the cascade range and stuff and on the east side you have um more desert in fact the central oregon is high desert they call it and then I haven't really been out in Eastern Oregon that much, like far Eastern Oregon. So I'm not entirely sure how they would describe that. Um, it might be a little bit more drier. It's going to be drier out there. Um, so we've got a lot of topographical differences in our land. Of course, we've got the Willamette Valley that Portland is part of. So when I drive, we're in the Shehalem Valley more because we're a little bit farther. We're between halfway between like Portland and the coast. So it's before you hit the coast range, but you kind of have to go over some hills or mountains or whatever you want to call it in order to get into the part that we live in. So when I went driving, it was like I said, you can either call it a very tall hill or a very short mountain, whichever way you want to <laughs> phrase it. I think in the old terminology, what they classified as a mountain was anything above a thousand feet. So if that was the case, if you still use that terminology, I was on a mountain. I was, I was driving around three weeks ago. And it was just beautiful. It was nice as you're coming down off of that hill, mountain. Um, you can see kind of some valley area below. It's just, it was pretty. Plus just seeing like the orchards and the fields and whatever else around it was so pretty so I'm gonna insert a video I was not holding my phone so don't make comments about it it was on a little stand on my dash um, and it just as I was driving around you got to see some of the the landscape and such um, so I'm gonna show that here that'll be the end part of my video uh, so I will go ahead and say a big thank you for coming to watch. Um, I hope you all are doing well. I hope we're kind of getting towards the backside of this virus stuff and that um, we're going to see that light at the end of the tunnel is even bigger now. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Um, but yeah, for those of you who live in cities and such that can't get out, you know, you're stuck in an apartment. You can't even go for a walk. I know like New York and LA, uh, or California in general, not just LA. They're kind of like in lockdown positions where you can't even go out and really they don't even want you walking around. Or if you have to go to the store, you have, you're have you required to wear a mask, even if you would normally. Um, so hopefully getting being able to, you know, I've got a nice sunny day today you get to see that but also the drive will hopefully give you a little lift up your spirits a little bit I hope um, so a big thank you for all of you who have come and watched um, if you're new or even if you've watched me before but you haven't subscribed go ahead and hit that subscription um, button and um, let me know that you uh, like what you're seeing as well as that you want to keep seeing more um, give me comments if you think um, there's too much of something there you would like to see something else see more of this of a specific thing whether you want to see um, more stitching which is a little bit tougher because then you know like I said when I'm outside I'm out for hours and hours and hours and I don't stitch until after dinner time because I do other things throughout the day um, so yeah let me know let me know what you think and um, what you'd like to see more of or how I can change things up a little bit better if if I can, then I will. 
But yeah, I hope you all are having a good time and I will leave you with this lovely view of this drive and uh, say goodbye from here. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.